Well, praise the Lord, in Jesus' holy and blessed name. It really is a beautiful day to be in Jesus. It really is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Tom is with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, some serious thoughts. Uh, when you look around the world today, as we know that Jesus Christ is coming soon, very soon now, very soon now, one of the things that we witness taking place is man destroying other men to lift up themselves. They have to bring them down in order to lift themselves up. They have to bring other people down in order to lift themselves up. And we see it every day. You only need but to watch the news for a little while and you see people destroying other people so that they look good, to make themselves right. This is a tragedy. The world is good at it. Unless it creep into the church, it ought not, but it often does. It creeps in and people will destroy another person simply because they disagree with a point or a thought or in order to make themselves look like they know more than anybody else does. And it's a tragedy to see that when it happens in the body of Christ. We expect it in the world in these days, but it ought not be so in the church, in the body of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 makes this point very well. Paul writing, inspired by the very Spirit of God, writes this. Let's take a look at this. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, capital S, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. We'll stop there for a moment. Glory be to God. That was Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 13. Philippians chapter 1 verses 1 through 13. If there be any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, in any bow, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Glorious. Hallelujah. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Let nothing be done. And 
not sure we need to even say anything. We should need to say anything. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other, esteem other better than themselves. Who, who is this for? Who is it in play? Me? For you? It's for you. For you. When this is done, you know more about this than I do. Praise God. Glory be to God. I'm just sharing what the Lord gave me. To, I believe the Lord gave me to share today. There's always more to know and more to understand. Deeper to go and deeper to share. Because I share this message today, doesn't mean there isn't more to share on the same text. Hence, the attacks come. Yeah, but, what did you know? Well, you should know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Help me out. All right. Share the word of God. All right. But not for vain glory. What I share, I share not for vain glory but for the glory of God and your edification. Not that I be lifted up, but do you be lifted up? I do what I do. God will exalt me in due time. If that's, you know, if I'm to be exalted, God will exalt me. I'm not exalting myself. I'm just here telling you what the Lord put on my heart to give to you today. That's it. It's for you. For not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. If I come out here and, and I don't do this because, you know, I, I know I'm going to be attacked for it. Shame on me. But I take the attacks. We go through it. We do what we do in our care for others, in our care for you. Because God cares for you, we care for you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. It's the way Jesus viewed this when he was here with us. When he came the first time as the suffering servant. God come in the flesh. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he humbled himself. It's about humbling ourselves and lifting others up. We don't humble others to lift ourselves up. We humble ourselves that others be lifted up. That the name of Jesus Christ be proclaimed. The glory of God given. God be given the glory to his name. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Folks out there, your salvation is possible today because Jesus did this, came into the world, took on flesh, the Son of God, the Son of Man. He came and bled and died for you, that you might have life. He came, bled, died, buried, and rose from the dead, that you might have life. The price of your salvation, the forgiveness of your sin, is this what Jesus Christ has done for you. Not what I've done for you, not what any man can do for you, other than this man, the Son of Man, the Son of God, 
the Christ. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Doesn't get any clearer than that one. That's pretty clear. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. All things, above, on, beneath, That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Today you can choose to do this. Oh, glory be to God unto your salvation. Or in the very near future, going to do it anyway, but it'll be to your damnation. Today, before it's too late, choose to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. And with the tongue, a verbal confession is made. Hallelujah. To the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. For it's all to his glory. And for his good pleasure. That's reason enough. It is more than reason enough. For God has so said, and what God says is, is. You can believe it now, and we'll believe it later if you don't believe it now. So believe now. Trust the Lord today. Oh, hallelujah. And brothers and sisters, let us build up the body of Christ all way. Build full packed down, filled to overflowing. Let us lift one another in his glory and praise and honor. Hallelujah. Oh, it really is a glorious, blessed, and beautiful day to be in Jesus. Amen and amen.